Hi there. Now that we have established why we need to design embedded systems using programmable elements, let's take a look at the elements actually used as a programmable chip in embedded system. So there are microprocessors, there are microcontrollers, there are PLDs or programmable logic devices like FPGA or CPLD and latest there are SOCs or system on chip. We are looking at the embedded systems from a beginner's perspective and therefore we will skip the PLDs and system on chips from our discussion as of now. We will just focus on microprocessor and microcontroller and which one we are going to use and we will try to justify that. So let us see. A microprocessor is a general purpose processor as you might know or if you don't know then it is just a general purpose processor. What it means is if you have seen the desktop computer that we use, it employs a microprocessor. So there is a very big socket where the microprocessor sits and onto that socket there are a number of different things connected like there is a RAM chip, there is a ROM chip or there are ROM chips, there are storage hard disks, there are IO ports, there is USB, serial port, parallel port or audio jacks number of different things. The video port is there, timer ICs, uh, serial communication ports, whatever communication. Now there is LAN port and number of different ports you see onto that board. Why we call what we call that board is a motherboard and as you have seen a motherboard is bigger and many a times expensive than the CPU or the microprocessor itself. What I am trying to say is CPU is generally used to create a computer system where you are supposed to do number of different things apart from one dedicated task. So I will use it for recording videos, I will use it to download programs into my microcontroller, I will use it to create graphics, I will use it to browse internet, send emails, watch YouTube, watch Netflix videos, number of different things. And that is the reason the CPU is a complicated system or the computer is a complicated system. It requires all the things which needs to be connected externally. Although this is the fact, the microprocessors are sometimes used to create the embedded systems as well. Take the classic example of your ATM machine. ATM machine is built with the computer system inside and you are not supposed to play games over there by the way. What is the next alternative apart from the microprocessor? there is a microcontroller and why we prefer microcontroller the reason is very simple all those circuits which you need to connect externally to microprocessor are there already present onto the same chip on microcontroller definitely now the amount of ram or rom or timer or io ports or serial port whatever is shown onto this block diagram the amount in which these features will be present will be lesser because it is all existing on a same IC or the same chip. But then the benefit is as we don't need external hardware and as we don't need external motherboard, the cost is reduced drastically, drastically and the chip becomes completely suitable for smaller applications or for simpler application. Now let's consider a temperature controller. What is the price of temperature controller anyways that is expected? <coughs> if I talk in terms of US dollars then it should not be more than 10 to 20 dollars. In India we buy temperature controller starting at rupees 300, 400, 500 rupees. That is the max cost it has and that is why it needs or it is built using a microcontroller which is having the minimum required features on chip and it can be directly used inserting into the socket. No RAM, ROM, anything needed to be connected to it externally. The examples are number of different uh, microcontrollers are there. We will look at them uh, one by one afterwards. But the classic example is Intel 8051 and the microchip Speak. Then there came Atmel's AVR. Then Atmel's AVR built the Arduinos. Then recently, a couple of years back, Microchip purchased the Atmel. And now AVR is also developed by Microchip. These are the microcontrollers. And we are going to focus on studying the microcontroller for development of embedded system. Conventionally, the microcontroller programming or developing a system using microcontroller has a particular set of instructions decided. 
it is dedicatedly used for electronics engineering people or it is meant to be done by electronics engineering people that's a very standard format so we'll just call it electronics or computer but no other people would be able to study microcontrollers it requires a deep understanding of the microcontroller architecture it needs you to have very sound programming knowledge using any programming uh, language apart from C or assembly it requires special circuits like development boards and programmer for using it and it is definitely not suited for those people who do not have background of electronics or technology so generally a microcontroller study involves the entire study of the architecture the instructions how to write those instructions how to create a program out of those instructions and then how to download that onto the controller and then doing all the stuffs what happens is all these things blocks a non-science background person from entering into the microcontrollers field and why they are going to study Arduino is because of the same reason the main purpose of development of Arduino itself was to allow anyone to be able to write down programs for microcontroller stay tuned we'll see all the details slowly one by one in the subsequent videos thanks for watching this video